Telescope helps us to see far things. A microscope helps us to see tiny things. A kaleidoscope helps us to see colorful things. Now, how do we see future things? I call it the future scope, a tool that helps us see things of the future. Now, these things are not real. They are imagined. These things we dream before we desire, we deserve, and we demand. Now, let's go back 100 years, and let's use a future scope to look at those things we will have dreamed, desired, deserved, and demanded 100 years ago. I call it the four Ds that humanity collectively dreams, desires, deserves, and demands. What will we have seen through that future scope? We will have seen cars, we will have seen aircrafts, we will have seen medicines, we will have seen rockets, satellites, ships, all of those machines, appliances, tools that have made our lives as humans better, easier, and faster. Now, what made those things a reality? Over the last hundred years, over the last century, we saw these two transformative forces come together. On the one hand, we had technology. Technology, which is, in very simple terms, science in a usable form that bridges knowledge, creativity, imagination with the products, the real-world tools that are tangible, that we can use to make our lives so much better. And then we had manufacturing. We saw the processes, the materials, the machines, the manpower, power, energy, skills, all of those come together to realize these innovations over the last century. Now, these two forces, it is at the intersection of these two forces, manufacturing and technology, that we were actually able to realize the innovations of the last century. Now let's come back to today, to 2024. And if we were to look into the future with a future scope, what are those things that we will see humanity collectively 4D? Dream, desire, deserve, and demand. Now, a word of caution. We don't have to, and we should not be looking at the next century. Probably a decade is long enough, because I'm seeing an explosion of possibilities, ideas, imaginations. And we can't just have one future scope. We need several future scopes. And I'm going to show you some of what I use for the future. The first one I see is things that quite literally drive the next generation of technology, business models, products, services, which will change transport as humanity knows of it in the future. Moving on, I look at how we will reinvent machines, we will reimagine materials, and we will make manufacturing good for Earth. We will make manufacturing resources efficient, resources neutral, zero emissions, we will make it conserve water, we will make manufacturing recycled products, etc., etc. I also see the future where things Technology thinks, innovations help India achieve self-reliance in deterrence and in defense. I see India advancing and applying technologies that provide a much safer nation, both externally and within. From defense, I see things reinventing for humanity's most deserving. I see young youth, innovators, and, and entrepreneurs use the power of technology to bring dignity, productivity, and capability to those that are most deserving, those that are deprived, disadvantaged, displaced, and so on. I also see India expand its dominance as a digital first nation, moving digital India from consumer services to factories, to production, and to value chain. I see the factories of the future made possible through advanced technologies like artificial intelligence, robotics, and automation. But I also see these factories of the future 
become net zero in everything from emissions, water, resources, materials, energy, and so on. And I also see my home state of Tamil Nadu emerge as the undisputed leader in South Asia when it comes to industrial technologies and advanced manufacturing. I also see healthcare made more affordable, available, and accurate. I see things that can use the power of AI, robotics, and sensor to bring healthcare that is precise, personalized, predictive, and preventive. We also move on to making humanity resilient when it comes to climate change. Agriculture, infrastructure, urban communities, coastal communities, I see things which make us reverse the impact of climate change and make us more resilient towards climate change. So the future scope that I see, the future scopes that I see are in front of us. Now these are the collective innovations that we as humanity 4D. Now these innovations, the things I see in the future, in these future scopes, they come in one of two forms. Hardware products or hardware devices, which we as humans, end users can use. I see industrial systems which power our industrial sectors. Now, going back 100 years, all of those innovations that we would have foreseen were able to realize those futures thanks to what I call the next generation of companies. Now, these are companies that are not born in the past. They're born in the present and possibly going to be born in the future. I have a few examples of some of these companies that are already realizing the things that I have seen through these eight future scopes. When it comes to next-gen technology for mobility, I see Ethereal actually giving Elon Musk a run for his money, quite literally. They are looking at heavy lift rockets which can actually make us a space-faring civilization. I'm looking at Blair, which actually has created multiple types of hybrid electric drive systems for powering different forms of hybrid vehicles before we go fully into electric vehicles. I see Seratatwa bringing ultra-high temperature ceramic polymers to actually make India self-reliant in materials which we actually are very deficient and we are extremely dependent on import of these materials. In defense, I see enormous progress. I see Big Bang Boom, a startup which is based in Chennai, come up with different types of technologies for different applications and very recently, they won an order of 200 crores for their anti-drone system. Assistive and accessibility innovations, again, very uh, short distance from where we are, there is Yali Mobility that is bringing an electric wheelchair for those that are handicapped wheelchair users. Cyber physical systems, industrializing cyber physical systems, we have Zyma, which uses ultrasound techniques to bring sensors to measure heat temperature, and other very critical parameters in advanced, very uh, heavy-duty industrial equipment and machinery. Exact space brings intelligence into managing and operating power plants. GoNV converts plastic into usable industrial fuel. So we no longer have to worry about plastic going wasted, going all over and spoiling uh, the, the ecology. We actually can make wealth from that waste. I see Plebsi using ultrasound, using robotics to help remote teleoperated robotics for ultrasound you know, procedures. So the radiologist can uh, be in the town, whereas the machine and the patient can be a you know, few tens of kilometers away, and over the internet, the radiologist is actually able to perform that procedure. In climate resilience, we're seeing some very, very interesting technologies come together. All right, so we've looked at these future scopes. Now, going back a century, for us to be able to realize all of those amazing innovations over the last century, there is one very important transformation that happened. Innovating manufacturing for manufacturing innovations. It was evolutionary, but also revolutionary. It is this over the last century that actually helped us realize those innovations that we would have collectively as humanity dreamed of. Now, we need to repeat this now. In order for us to be able to realize the innovations, the things that I see in the future through these future scopes, 
We need to be innovating manufacturing for manufacturing innovation. So how do we go about it? The first part, innovation of manufacturing. The big picture, the macro big picture. So what are the things we should be doing? Firstly, we've got to go away from only scale-based gains. We need to look at wins in terms of efficiency, productivity, quality, flexibility, and of course, profitability. Moving on, we need to win in the automation age. And for us to do that, we need to upgrade our technical workforce to technological talent. We have to become self-reliant, not only in product and in production, but we also have to have the ability to develop and apply technology in manufacturing being global best. I spoke about the importance of going beyond scale, but speed matters even more than scale, and not just speed, speed in the right direction, which I call velocity, which very well rhymes with all of those things I spoke before, which is productivity, flexibility, profitability, we need velocity. And how do we do that? We have precisely targeted products, localized manufacturing, and fast distribution. The second part of innovating manufacturing for manufacturing innovations is innovation in manufacturing, which are the micro master strokes. So the big picture, the macro big picture we saw, the micro master strokes, the, the detail, the nitty gritty. Firstly, our factories will have to become net positive. It, it doesn't suffice if they just become net zero in terms of emissions, energy, water, and so on. They have to become net positive in terms of being good for business, in good, good for the humanity, for humans, and also for Earth overall. We have to look at upgrading from low-cost components to high-value products. We have, to, we, have to go, we have to take our factories from being low-cost suppliers to high-value manufacturers. And we need to come up with products that are innovative, recyclable, and world-class. Materials. Enough can never be said about the amount of work we need to do when it comes to materials. We have to make them futuristic. We have to make them recyclable. Sustainability. The right thing to do when it comes to sustainability, has to be good for business too. There is huge potential to unlock business value and gain competitive edge by actually bringing sustainability excellence as important as, say, business excellence or operational excellence. So once again, to sum it up, innovating manufacturing for manufacturing innovations. Innovation of manufacturing, the big picture, the macro big picture, innovation in manufacturing, the micro master strokes. Now, how do we go about it? This statement has to be a national scale mission statement, a mantra for the country as a, as a whole to emerge as the undisputed leader that helps realize these innovations of the future. Now, it's going to be a lot of work, and what that work really involves is bringing together industry, academia, and government, tying these stakeholders together in order for us to be able to catalyze the power of transformation from the forces of talent, technology, and ventures. Has this been done before? Well, absolutely. It happened in this place called California. It happened in the 1950s, ever since the World War II. Talent, technology, and ventures came together. Industry, academia, and government worked together in order for unleashing this power of transformation. It happened the most, the grandest scale in California. It continues to happen. But it also happened to some lesser extent in other places as well. Japan, Israel, Seattle, Germany, even South Korea. It can happen in India because India should, India must, India can, and India will. And I call this vision manufacturing. Manufacturing is the future for manufacturing the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Vish Sahasranamum, and this is my life's calling, my life's work, and my life's destiny. Thank you.